Welcome to the World Radio Communication Conference 2023 in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Isabel Mara, who is the Director General of the Global Satellite Operators Association, JASOA. Isabel, great to see you in the studio today. Great to see you too, and great to see you. I think it's a few times now that we've met in Dubai for such events. So Indeed, great to absolutely. Be here. <laughs> yes, and in Shamwa Sheikh and uh, the places. Yeah, there. and now so, in Dubai as well. Yeah. Yes, so that's fantastic. Look, I wanted to start off by asking you why is the radio communication conference important to Jasoa? I think for us, for our industry, the satellite industry, this is really a key conference because it is at a time where we've never seen so much innovation and growth in you know in the space economy and in the satellite industry. Uh, investments are, you know, have really tripled. I mean, we've never seen investment as we have seen in the last few years. Uh, services that we are providing are becoming more affordable, more reliable. And in particular, we go to areas that are unserved, underserved, and, and where over, you know, over terrestrial, maybe there is no terrestrial coverage as well. So for us, this is key because any regulation, any resolutions that come out of WRC are clearly not only important for our own industry, if you want, the services that we provide, but also to connect the world, to connect the 2.6 billion that are still not connected or still not online. Any outcome will really have a tremendous impact on digital connectivity, and we are major players uh, you know, in, uh, in, in that part of the, the economy. Now, space sustainability is a big talking point, uh, both here and, and around the globe. Could you tell us what this really means to Jasoa and, and, and what, how you're contributing to this? Yeah. Well, I think what I just said about, you know, what is our role in, in terms of bridging the digital divide and, and providing more connectivity. Whilst we are doing that, we also need an increasing our services, an industry that is, you know, incrementally uh, increasing. We really need also to make sure that we do uh, operate in a very responsible manner. Uh, and so very recently, I think uh, 10 days ago, we um, adopted as GSOA a code of conduct on space sustainability. And that I think is really a, a, an important first step, you know, in the direction of, of uh, working towards uh, space sustainability. What we are doing with that is that, you know, the, the code of conduct calls on operators uh, to really take actions uh, in four areas. So one is, is really to minimize um, the threat of, of debris. The other one is to minimize uh, in-orbit collision. Thirdly, it's also to protect human life in space, so protect our astronauts. And fourth is really as well to minimize, um, you know, the optical uh, astronomy, so the impact uh, of satellites on optical astronomy. So I think this is really a, a critical step. I know it's been very, very much welcomed by uh, the Secretary General of the ITU, by the Director of, of the Bureau of um, Radio Communications Bureau. So we are really looking forward as well to work, you know, with all relevant stakeholders to ensure that, uh, you know, it's in the interest of everybody that we have a space that is uh, secure, safe and, and manageable and, and sustainable. Yeah. And in terms of uh, the outcomes, what do you hope will be uh, some of the key outcomes that will come out from this uh, year's uh, World Radio Communication Conference? Well, I think for us, we came here really with three areas that are main. You know, one is to sort of safeguard the critical services that we are already providing. So this is really sort of pr protecting, safeguarding the spectrums that we have that is allocated to satellite um, and ensuring maybe that any additional spectrum that is proposals for more spectrum for IMT, you know, particularly in the band like six gigahertz, um, for us, this spectrum, we don't want any change. The no change position on, you know, for anybody here will know what agenda item 1.2 is. Um, so we don't want any change to agenda item 1.2. Um, the second one is promoting innovation and growth. As I was saying, you know, we are really growing as an industry exponentially. Uh, but we have a lot of innovative services coming up as well. Um, so really any sort of, uh, you know, if we have the, the SIM regulations around eSIM in the KU and KA band, for us it's really ensuring that we have a regulatory framework that is sort of predictable and that can foster the growth of these services, of all this new innovation. And the third one is looking really ahead at, at new services, new space, when we think maybe already at WRC 27, as you know, here we already, you know, talk of new agenda items uh, for the for the next four years. So for us again, it's it's ensuring that our industry safeguards the spectrum that we have, so that we can foster, we can continue to innovate these services, 
And again, it's really, you know, making sure that maybe the mobile industry or the, the spectrum for IMT, we look at how the allocation that is already there can be used more efficiently before we look into proposing new allocation of IMT, uh, of spectrum for IMT. So that would be, you know, our ideal scenario to come out with uh, regulations, as I said, resolution, uh, resolutions that really help us, um, you know, uh, having moving forward with these three objectives that we have. Well, thank you very much for joining us in the studio and giving us thank a few you. insights into the world of satellites and uh, satellite operators. As Isabel Mauro, Director General of the Global Satellite Operators Association, thank you very much indeed for joining us today. Thank you very much, Max. Thank, thank you. you. And if you've enjoyed this interview, which I hope you have, there are plenty more on the ITU YouTube channel, as well as podcasts on our ITU SoundCloud channel and wherever you get your podcasts from. And for further information, please visit www.itu.int. Thanks for tuning in.